Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. In their quest to identify ways to reduce weight and retain product durability at the same time, manufacturers stumble on composite materials created by combining two or more types of materials. Now, the use of composites have become a standard practice in aerospace and automotive, suggesting that other industries will soon be following in their footsteps. Some are already doing so. But simulating composites is very different from simulating traditional metals and plastics. Here's the good thing about composites, according to Olivier Guillamin, Siemens PLM Software's Director of Product and Marketing Strategy. With composites, the nice thing is that you, know, you can design the material. You can select the fibers, the resins, the orientation. So, so you actually design the material. That's an additional flexibility. So what is the bad thing about that? Well, here's Guillaume again. You have to design the material. And we are talking the, the, the micro level where uh, you have to deal with the fi which fibers, which, which resin, which uh, weave architecture I'm going to choose and so on. With some software, like Digimet from MSE Software, you can accurately model the behavior of your composite materials. And what do we mean by that? Here is Kurt Danielson, application engineer from MSC Software. ...with composite materials and produces a virtual material model that FEA programs can utilize during the simulation process. The virtual material model takes into account the individual properties of the composite materials as well as the more dynamic variables produced during the actual manufacturing process, such as fiber orientation, by accounting for these factors, Dujimat can now produce accurate information to your finite element analysis software. With Digimat in the loop, during the simulation process, the FEA program can utilize Digimat's virtual material model to create much more accurate models, along with more precise simulation. This can be seen in the results represented by the red line, which shows analysis which uses Digimat's virtual material model. By using Digimat, our results match very closely with the real-world experimental measurements. The other part of simulating composite design is figuring out the best layout of these materials. This is where you deal with how these materials, which usually come in sheets of plies, will fit on the curvature of your design. This operation can be simulated in Siemens FiberSim, for example, which is tightly integrated with its CAD and finite element analysis software, NX. The layered approach used with composites, as seen in the simulation in ANSYS software, adds complexity to the simulation job. More from ANSYS Software's Structural Mechanics Product Line Manager, Pierre Thifri. If you look at the regular materials that like steel, the only thing you will look for is a maximum stress or a deformation. In composites, you have many layers, and you want to look at the results layer by layer. And there are a number of technical indicators of whether the ply is going to fail or not. So that's, that's the specifics, I would say, of composites. And for that, we use exactly the same solvers, say, as for regular material, except that the material definition itself is different and needs to be defined. We have an additional solution, which we call the ANSYS Composite Pre-Post, which is dedicated to the setup of the composites model itself, so really of the, the, the materials and so on, and to, uh, to the analysis of the specific failure of a composite. In a standard FEA or analysis program, you're looking at how stress and load are distributed over a block of geometry. In composite, you're looking at how these stresses will affect each sheet, cutout, or ply. One software that does that is Collier Research Hypersizer. When people say optimizing a design, usually they're talking about finding the best geometry or shape that can counteract the expected heat pressure or burden the product will have to endure. So what does optimization mean for composites? Here's Craig Collier, CEO of Collier Research. 
So the necessary first step is to identify the amount of plies for each individual layers. The software then will take those airspace rules, the symmetry and balance and things like that, to generate the discrete um, uh, layer, you know, stacking sequence, and then it's going to optimize that. Now, the process of simulating composites involves potentially hundreds of sheets and thousands of plies, so it's important to have a software that can automatically number and deal with each sheet, each piece and show you the exact order of the stack up and show you how to place them in your design. And any time you change the direction of the ply, the software has to recalculate their impact because the composite materials are not isotropic, that is to say, they don't expand at the same rate in the same way the metallic materials typically do. Collier Research, Craig Collier again. And what if I take all the um select all uh, with the same angle. So I've selected all the zeros. Now if I take the zeros and I rotate them, you can see here that all the numbers here dynamically updated as well as this image down here. You can see that the implications of changing the angles, what is it going to do to the performance of my material? Another important part of composite design simulation is to predict where you might have wrinkling, distortion, and warping, so you can fix these regions. And what does it look like? Here's a visual display of how the warping or buckling might occur on a section of an airplane fuselage, simulated inside Siemens PLM software's SAMSEV software. Composite simulation methods are improving day by day, but there are challenges, mainly because the sheets behave more like cloths than metal. Siemens Giamen again. There is no standard test or uh, uh, you know standard practices even to to tell engineers what what is what are the draping properties or the draping data for these different materials. Universities are working on it, but there is still no standard for assessing the drapeability or the manufacturability or the producibility of of, of textiles. Giamen points out that in comparison, there is an extensive body of testing standards already exist with metal materials. The current efforts by composite community to bolster material data will go a long way to avoid over-designing, which is what engineers are forced to do when they can't accurately predict how materials will behave. In September issue of Desktop Engineering magazine, my colleague Beth Stackpole and I take a closer look at the trends in composite usage and the technologies available to handle them. So look for these articles. For now, this is Kenneth Wong bidding you farewell from Compositeville.